What's up, clubbers? GM, GM, GM. Welcome to Web3 Club. In today's video, what we are going to see is how do we verify our smart contract on EtherScan or similar blog explorers, and what are the multiple ways to sort of verify our contract, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of doing that. This has been requested multiple times in my comments and in my Discord channel. So this is why I'm taking up this topic. We will basically explore two different methods uh, to verify a smart contract and we will use two different smart contracts to explain the two different methods. And without verifying the smart contract, the block explorer will not be able to allow you to sort of interact with the contract from their UI. Super excited about today's video. But before we get started, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you have any questions, leave a comment. If you want me to improve, leave a comment. If you have something that you want to discuss deeply uh, with the rest of the community, join my Discord server for that. We try to help each other out wherever we can. All right, with that said, let's get started. So there are two ways to verify that we'll explore in today's video. One is to flatten all the contracts into one single file and then verifying using that file. And the other is a standard JSON input method for which you need to install something called hard hat and through which we can generate this file. All right, so let's try out the flatten method first. So I've already opened Open Zeppelin over here, the Open Zeppelin wizard, and I've selected ERC721 with my token, MTK, blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to open this in Remix. Now, once you have Remix over here, uh, first thing that I'm going to do in this video, just for explaining how do we move forward is uh, write string memory name and string memory symbol over here and then these are the values that i'm going to pass to the erc721 module all right now that we have this uh, what we're going to do is going to go to this compiler section here we have the compiler that we can select uh, the compiler version the language and there are a bunch of other configurations as well for example the enable optimization which you should do if you're deploying to the main net because you know this will help you reduce your deployment gas fees and also optimize the hell out of it all right so enable optimization let's leave it at 200 and click on compile so these are the settings that you will need to make sure that you know you have handy because these will be required later on now because i have selected 200 as optimization steps uh, this is going to take a little bit of time but once it is done, we will be ready to deploy and you can see it is already done. All right, now to deploy, select this portion and then in the contract, uh, select your my token contract. And for deployment, it will need two things, the name and the symbol. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to select uh, injected web3 over here. What injected web3 means is that uh, it will open up the MetaMask for me. And it will ask me to connect metamask to remix and once i do that and if i click on transact with the appropriate values the metamask pop-up will come for a transaction to go through now whatever network the metamask is connected to on that network we will be we will end up deploying our smart contract all right so let's say the first the name that i have is my token and the symbol is mtk and I click on transact after selecting the injected web3. As you can see, it is showing Rinke by uh, 4 is the chain ID of Rinke by network. I click on transact. The MetaMask pop up comes. Uh, whatever network MetaMask is connected to, that network is where we will end up deploying this. All right, so now I can click on confirm. And now we just wait uh, for the transaction to go through. And the transaction has go th gone through. Now, if I open the transaction, uh, it still says contact contract creation, but because it is ring by it is a little slow right now. Uh, let me just refresh it. Still not there. All right. After waiting a, waiting a while, this sort of showed up here. Uh, now I can select the contract that uh, was created. And you can see that in the contract section here, there is no code present. And it is asking me to verify and publish my source code. So what I'm going to do is click on verify and publish. Uh, and now the a small form sort of opens up here. I have to enter the compiler type uh, and because we are going to use the flatten all contracts in one single file, uh, I'm going to select 
solidity single file over here and once selected now i need to select the compiler version now to find out my compiler version i will go here and here it says 0.8.7 plus commit e28 all right so i go here i find 0.8.7 e28 great so i've selected the compiler version now i need to give a license uh, i'm just going to go ahead and select mit license but this depends on what kind of business use case you have so let me select mit and click continue all right great now uh, the thing is i can see that uh, this is a form that has opened up it has few things it has a contract address we can't change a compiler that we can't change anymore uh, we also have optimization over here that we can select yes or no but uh, because we did optimize uh, we will select yes over here this portion we have to enter the solidity contract code now how do we find solidity contract code of course you can just copy and paste this but this will not work so now to do that uh, what we will do is go to this option called plugin manager and here we will search for flattener which you know sort of pops up like this and click on activate all right as soon as it activates a new option sort of comes up over here and an image should have come but i don't know why it is not coming up but yeah uh, now it is giving me an option to flatten the contract 59a800 and which is the one i want to flatten so i click on flatten over here and then i click save i just click accept over here and voila we have the flattened contract ready so what I'm going to do is just copy this contract and paste it over here. Now the next option is constructor arguments which are ABI encoded and uh, generally this will be filled out. If it is not filled out, what you're going, what you going to do is uh, select your contract over here and then click on bytecode copy. All right. Uh, just to make sure what the bytecode looks like, uh, this is what the bytecode sort of looks like. And this is not what we are interested in. We are interested in the object portion, the object uh, part of this bytecode. So I'm going to copy that, remove everything else. And now go back here, uh, go back to the transaction that I have initiated and click on click to see more. Now you will see that there's an input data over here, uh, which, you know, shows up like this. So uh, what I'm going to do is because I've already copied my bytecode, I'm going to paste that over here. Just for extra measure, I'm going to add 0x over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the input data that was given to this transaction. All right. So I'm just going to copy and paste it over here. Now you will notice the code is very, very similar. All right. Uh, there is like absolutely same thing. Okay. So what we're going to do is... Uh, on my Mac, I'm going to press command D. I think it's control D for windows or whatever. And I'm going to select the, select the same portion. All right. And as you can see, uh, it selected portion till a point. And then in the second push, second line, which I had taken from my input data, there is some extra data, which is basically the constructor argument. Okay. So I'm going to delete everything except the constructor argument which is left now over here so now this is the thing that i will copy and i will paste here and you can actually notice that it's the same value so i'm going to press command f and i'm going to paste the value and it will match directly with that and the green basically means that it matched all right so this is the constructor arguments this is how you create the constructor arguments for this now for our specific case we will basically leave the contract library address like that just don't do anything and now in the miscellaneous settings we select runs as 200 because um, that is what we had done over here 200 runs and optimization was enabled the evm version to target is def compiler default and that is what we had selected and license type is mit for us I click on my I am not a robot and click verify and publish and now I just wait this this request sort of takes a little bit of time so we have to wait patiently just like this if you followed all the steps correctly uh, you will see a screen like this which says successfully generated bytecode and ABI for contract address and your contract address all right and this is what it will look like uh, and it will also throw up and contract ABI Amazing. And if I go back to this contract, you can see that the contract now has a 
tick mark and now I have access to the read and write methods. All right. So this is how you verify uh, any contract using a flattened method. Now there's another way uh, where you know you can verify the code. In that case, what happens is every file in the project has their own little window, uh, unlike this one specific window for all the files. And for that, we will need to do some command line magic. All right, now before I get started, please make sure that you have Node.js installed uh, with npm as well. I am in a specific folder and I'm going to create a new folder called standard JSON input SJI. All right, and I'm going to cd into SJI. Now I'm going to write something called npx hard hat help. All right, so npx hard hat help. npx is a package which comes with npm. Uh, hardhat is the package that we want to use and help is I'm just doing it because this will help me install hardhat right so I write npx hardhat help and it says need to install the following packages hardhat do I agree say yes and we move forward now we just wait uh, for the hardhat package to install and now hardhat is installed and it is asking me what do I want to do so I'm just going to select create a basic sample project and press enter. The hardhead project root will be what I've selected over here. And do I want to add a git ignore file? Let it be. Just press, just keep pressing enter. Uh, don't need to do anything else and it will take you forward. So what hardhead is doing is, uh, is creating a new project for me to work with. If you don't know how to install anything like that, uh, just go to this URL that I will share in the description. Uh, where you know it sort of helps you set up the environment by installing node.js uh, upgrading your node.js and then creating a new hardhead project all right now that we have a hardhead project ready uh, let me open this in sublime text and you can see there are a bunch of things already present uh, now i go to contracts and greeter.sol and i remove everything next what i'm going to do is uh, go back to my open zeppelin click on copy to clipboard and paste the whole contract over here. I'm going to save it multiple times for the for good measure. <laughs> I'm going to remove my token uh, and MTK. And this time I'm going to call string memory uh, underscore underscore name. So I'm using double underscore because if I use exactly the same code, I will not get a chance to show you how to verify that smart contract because the exact same code gives us the exact same bytecode so string memory underscore underscore symbol and i'm going to send these values over here again awesome uh, i'm going to save this and uh, just rename this to my token dot solve now let's try and compile this by running npx hard hat compile and it has already given me an error which says open zeppelin contracts is not present that I'm trying to import. So what I'm going to do is just write npm install double hyphen save open zeppelin contracts. This basically means to bring the open zeppelin contracts into this project. All right, now that I have it, I run npx hard at compile again. So this time it is downloading 0.84, uh, 0.8.4 uh, compiler for me because this was the first time that I was running it. It compiled all the 14 solidity files successfully and now has created artifacts and cache. Now that it has compiled successfully, uh, what we need to do is go to artifacts, uh, select contracts and then select my contract.sol uh, and then click on my token.json. Here you will find this ABI and bytecode. So we are having both the two things, uh, ABI and bytecode that you used to get from Remix. We have uh, that already present over here. Now this is not ready for uh, deploying to the mainnet because uh, in the hardhat config, we haven't asked hardhat to sort of run any optimization. So let's just do that. Now, as you will see in hardhat.org slash config, uh, there is a simple way for us to let Hardhat know what is the configuration for this. Uh, so there is there is this version called uh, Solidity version, right? So we just copy that and we paste that over here. Uh, we select our Solidity version from here and then paste it here. All right, and then we basically save the file. Uh, so this means that uh, we will be enabling the optimizer. 
uh, on the version 8.4 and we will run it 200 times so now that i have enabled 200 optimization runs uh, i'm going to compile it again and this time again you know uh, the bytecode that i will receive now will be a little bit different than the one that i have received earlier so i'm going to copy the bytecode uh, paste it over here and i'm also going to copy the abi and paste it here now to deploy this smart contract what i've done is i've written a small utility for me uh, which basically helps me deploy the smart contract and it takes the bytecode the abi and the arguments and helps me deploy it i've done a video earlier on how to deploy a smart contract this is just an implementation of that uh, i'll try and put the code in the description down below so i'm starting a new python server and i'm going to do what i'm going to do is create a uh, run local host port 8000 slash deploy.html because that's the name of the file uh, once i once it opens it asks me to connect with metamask and i go ahead and connect with it all right so now i need to enter the byte code that we have already uh, figured out over here enter it uh, then the next thing that we are going to put is the ABI and now I can also enter the arguments So first arguments will be my token and the second one will be M K or MT all right, and now I click on deploy Now as soon as I click on deploy um, Metamask pops up a bit basically asking me to confirm the transaction so that it can go ahead uh, so now i click on confirm and now we wait for the transaction to go ahead and as you can see the transaction has sort of confirmed uh, and if i open again it takes a little bit of time to update on the ring by testnet now in the meantime that it is uh, you know updating on the ui what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to artifacts again select build info and then there is one file present over here now in this one file, it's a JSON file. There are two major things that I want to showcase. One is the input and the other is the output. All right. So what we need to do is copy the input object. All right. And then just uh, save it in a new file over here. Just write input.json. And in the meantime, uh, the contract has now sort of updated on the UI. And now I can go ahead and click on contract. Click on verify and publish. Uh, now this time I'm going to select Solidity standard JSON input and in the compiler uh, it is 8.4. The license is MIT license and I agree and I move forward. Now again uh, the constructor arguments are already present but in case they were not I've already explained how to figure that out. Uh, in the miscellaneous settings uh, because we are using standard, JS standard input JSON it will figure it out from that itself so i'm going to click on browse and i'm going to select the input.json file and click open now i click on click to upload selected file all right and the file once uploaded uh, i can just click i am not a robot and click verify and publish and just sit back relax for it to publish and voila it has been published and you can see this successfully generated bytecode and api for contract address i can click here and I can see that the contract has a tick mark and the read and write options available. So this was the video for today. I hope um, it was helpful to you. Uh, I'll, I'll put as much resources as I can in the description down below. Please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, suggestions, leave it in the comments or you can come and join me on my Discord server. There are a bunch of others just like you who are discussing stuff over there, helping each other out. I'm pretty sure you will like it as well. I hope this video was helpful to you and I hope to see you again next time, next week. Till then, bye-bye.